Hi, welcome to Shakti Panel Real Talk. This is the place where we talk about topics that should be talked about at work, but aren't necessarily. We have a very important topic here today. Uh, my name is Deepa. I'm the founder and CEO of Journeys from Zinda, a software platform that is all about bringing people together and acting as one. Our topic today for the Shakti Panel Real Talk is leadership and especially women, uh, women leaders. We have today a very important guest. Her name is Dr. Donna Marino. She's an executive coach and uh, a psychologist. So Dr. Donna Marino has a book that has come out recently that I'm gonna let her talk to you about. Uh, welcome, Dr. Donna. Oh, thank you, Deepa. I'm really excited to be here and to uh, speak to your Shakti community. Excellent. So the name of your book, I have my notes here. The name of your book is Unleash the... Unleash the Wise Leader in You, A Woman's Guide to Leadership. Excellent. I mean, just, just to let everybody know, I warned Dr. Donna that I have my notes, but sometimes I cannot read them because I scribble a lot. So thank you, Donna. Thank you for <laughs> saving me there. No problem. Um, no problem. So, so Dr. Donna, tell me, is it okay if I call you Donna? Or do you want me to call you Dr. Donna? How would you Either like to... is fine, really. Okay. I'm flexible. Excellent. Excellent. So, so tell me, Dr. Donna, why women leaders? How is that important for you? And how did you, you know, can you talk a little bit about your experience, which has uh, kind of taken you here, your journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so about three years ago, I was uh, working in a more corporate type position, especially for a psychologist. And I was uh, managing a very large group practice with four locations and 4,000 clients. And um, I was running their continuing education department, psychology department, training department, you know, you name it, I did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came home from work one Friday night, uh, excited, wanted to go out with my husband. And um, my husband sat me down and uh, told me that my sister passed away. And this was completely unexpected. Uh, she had just turned 40 years old about two weeks before, and she hadn't shown up for work that day, and my mom found her on her bathroom floor of her apartment, and she had probably been there for, for a day already. I'm and, so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Adam. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. It was, it was an extremely shocking event, and um, we really didn't know what happened. And uh, later on, putting the pieces together, my mother and I, and finding her journal and the autopsy coming back, um, we, we realized that she had taken her own life. And um, it, was absolutely, it was absolutely unbearable. Uh, this was, my sister was um, highly intelligent. Um, she was, uh, she was an animal lover. She was a vet tech, uh, extremely skilled in math and science, um, very funny. Uh, and it was, she just never reached her, her full potential. And this was just a huge wake up call for me where I had always known um, that I was really called to do some really big work in the world. And I really feel that I'm meant to have a global impact. And when I looked at what I was doing now, I realized that I was very stressed out. I wasn't engaging in the activities that were important to me, like yoga and meditation. And when I was with my family, I wasn't really there. I was still working in my head. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, boy, I'm helping these other people who own the company get rich and I'm sacrificing so much of my life and I'm not living my purpose. I'm not helping people in the way I'm meant to. And so um, I left that job with um, a really strong desire to, to help women, to help women you know, understand their value, fulfill their purpose, reach their potential. And, and really become leaders in the world because um, I just think our world will be better off with um, more diversity sitting at the leadership table. And that includes women and other 
underrepresented populations. And um, so that's how this book came about really to, to really help elevate women and, and help them overcome those inner struggles that get in the way. Uh, when we look at corporate America, you know, in the Fortune 500 companies, it's only roughly 4% of women who are CEOs. And when we look at promotions, um, men will apply for positions if they meet 60% of the criteria, while women will be waiting till they're between 90% and 100% of the criteria to mm -hmm. apply. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really hoping that this book changes things and that more women, um, you know, claim their leadership and, and start really looking at their ambitions and, and living them out in the world. Um, I Truly wish. I, again, I'm so sorry, Donna, for your loss. I know it's been three years, but I'm sure that it hurts even now here every day. Um, so yeah, so I'm sorry. Um, and I know that with your sister, sister spirits kind of living in the book, this is going to make a difference to the world. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you're going to be helping a lot of women uh, all over and men uh you know with with this book um let's um let's 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 get into the actual book itself uh sure. because you know when you and i talked earlier there are a lot of really important um, components to this book right so um so you said that you started you know i i definitely relate to what you're saying which is you know we spend a lot of time doing things right just like hamsters on a wheel kind of thing right yeah. And, uh, you know, constantly kind of, you know, constantly doing things versus, you know, basically stepping back and realizing what is the purpose of this? What am I doing this for? Who am I impacting? Is this the right thing for me? Is this the right place for me? Uh, because I think after college, you kind of get sucked into that mm -hmm. workforce mm -hmm. and then you come up for breath 15, 20 years later, literally, right? Till that yeah. point of time, you kind of get caught in that wheel of wheel and they just keep going, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, this has been my life as well, but that's for another session. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I'll interview you for this. Yeah, you can interview me for that. There you go. Uh, so let's, let's actually talk about the components of your book, right? I mean, you mentioned a few things. You started off with um, claiming your leadership. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean by claiming your leadership? Oh, it's a great. Uh, you'll be proud of me because I read my handwriting this time. <laughs> great job. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I say in the book, um, you know, there's probably people coming to that chapter and saying, well, I've already claimed my leadership because, you know, this is my job title or. Mm -hmm. But um, interestingly enough, the first time I gave the um, wise leader talk uh, to an audience. I was talking to a group of women who were um, in finance, uh, group, they were entrepreneurs, they were mothers, they were lawyers and doctors, you know, it was a group of professional women. And when I asked them to raise their hands if they considered themselves a leader, I got a handful of hands, you know, wow. like, a small spattering. And I thought, wait, like what? So then I started asking them questions like, are you a mom? Are you a business owner? Are you on the board of your PTA or your church? Or And suddenly the hands started flying up, right? And, um, you know, I really realized that that's the first step of wise leadership is really, it just reinforced it so much, claiming your leadership. And I think that women almost wait for someone to hand them a, a certificate <laughs> that says you're a leader now. Leader! <laughs> yeah, I think women have been trained a little bit more to look for that external validation mm -hmm. and that approval and the labels. And I really encourage them to just decide. And you know what? You don't have to be a mom or on the board of a company or own a business to be a leader, you just have to decide that you are. Leadership is about influencing others. We all influence someone in our lives. So it's just, it's really about choosing it. 
And then once you choose it for yourself, you're going to act different. You're going to feel different. When you start owning that leadership, you're going to move through the world differently and the world is going to respond differently to you as a result. So I really think that that is the, the first principle of leadership. And even if you're the CEO of a company, you may not have recognized fully um, and owned fully your leadership. Uh, you know, one of the things I talk about in the book under the obstacles is imposter syndrome. Mm. And it does not matter how successful you are. Um, I have seen imposter syndrome in CEOs. I've seen it, you know, in moms. I've seen it. It, it does not matter how successful you are. So that tell me, what is what exactly is an imposter syndrome? Oh, sure. So imposter syndrome usually occurs in successful people, and they're usually high achievers. And there's a belief somewhere inside them that, um, that they're not as good as people think they are. And that somehow, like it's a fluke that they got to where they're at and someone is going to find out that they don't really belong there. Wow. And that's essentially imposter syndrome. Like maybe it was luck that I got here or sure I worked hard, but I'm not really smart. I just work hard. All these things that we tell ourselves that we're not, we're not really who people think. And if they find out they won't like us or we'll lose our positions or whatever that is, but there's that fear that we're going to be found out. Wow. That is debilitating. <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so leadership is about influencing. Then you talk about unleash your ambition. You know, this is something that is really interesting because, you know, women, if they have ambition, that is considered a bad thing, right? I mean, you've seen even in the debate yesterday, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, pre the vice presidential debate where, you know, the expectation is that, again, if Kamala Harris goes in and if she's ambitious and if she's aggressive, ooh, yeah. <laughs> that's a bad thing, yeah. right? The same thing goes for any woman leader, right? Mm -hmm. It is, uh, there is a certain way a woman is supposed to behave. So in that kind of scenario, what, what, what does that mean? Unleash your ambition and how can you unleash your ambition in a not so woman's world? <laughs> Yeah, no, it is a great question. And that's why I wrote that chapter is because so many women have, they have squelched their ambition, right? They don't want to be seen as too ambitious. Right. Um, ambition in women, we see as pushy or aggressive or, you know, less nice words, <laughs> right. Say, right? Bossy and other B words. Yeah, yeah. And we even see it in our little girls, we'll say, we'll call a little girl bossy, but we'll call a little boy assertive or in control, or, you know, there's, there's very different stereotypes that, that happen there. And so women really can stifle their dreams. And I'm encouraging them to do the opposite, right? To really think big, to, to think about, you know, for someone like you and I, Deepa, like we have global ambitions. We want to impact the world. Mm -hmm. Now, not every woman is going to unleash their ambition to that extent, but they don't have to play small either. And um, I love the uh, Marianne Williamson poem, Our Deepest Fear. And, you know, she says our, our playing small doesn't, doesn't serve the world. And it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, it's, it's definitely more challenging for women, but the more that women support one another, which is what I talk about in the lift each other up, mm -hmm. um, chapter, the more we support each other, the more we can normalize that. Um, and the, the more we do it, the more it will be normalized as well. And I think you can unleash your ambition without, um, without being aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. And if somebody takes it the wrong way, I think that's really more about them. And, right. 
And part of that unleashing your ambition is um, helping women not be such people pleasers <laughs> either, mm. right? right? Because yeah. leaders have to make tough decisions and not everyone's going to, to like those decisions all the time. Right. You know, I'm just wondering, um, Donna, if there is a, you know, one thing that you said earlier was that, uh, hey, um, um, we are constantly looking for that positive kind of affirmation. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about lifting each other up. So we are kind of giving each other that positive affirmation. Right. So I'm just wondering, is that, I mean, is that just inbuilt in us? Can we not do without the positive affirmation at all? Or, or are we saying that, you know, is, is that like a little weakness that we need to overcome? Or are we saying that's what it is? We just need to work with it by lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your thoughts on that? You know what? I, uh, I think that we can do it um, for ourselves as well. And I think that's, that's a process. And I do think as women get older, they get more comfortable in their skin yeah. and accepting mm -hmm. of themselves. I think mm -hmm. that's a natural process. Mm -hmm. But I also think that women are, um, you know, they're nurturers and caregivers. And so um, I think they enjoy that community and enjoy that mm -hmm. feeling of, Very true. of raising each other up and mm -hmm. You know, I, I talk about in the book collaboration over competition, right? And um, I think when we keep encouraging that, uh, I think it's just like an extra tool, not a weakness, because we mm -hmm. can do all the inner work with, you know, which is important. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not minimizing right, that, right. You know, that, the affirmations and everything else, but yeah. if we can also see that reflected back to us, mm -hmm. I, I think that's very powerful and. I, I think how women work in community is actually a, a strength rather than a weakness. Interesting, interesting. It's, uh, I mean, I smile because I talk about this whole concept of collaboration over competition all the time, mm -hmm. uh, because that is actually one of the things that I was not very happy about in corporate America. Mm -hmm. You know, because there is, you know, there is this sense of competition, whether it is, part of the culture or whether we feel it, I'm not sure, but there is this definite sense of competition, which, you know, which we could easily do without, you know, we can, you know, all of us can thrive in a collaborative environment. We don't necessarily have to be competitive to thrive and make the companies thrive and make the organizations thrive. Right. right. It is uh, it's a, it's a very interesting phenomenon that, you know, I hear women talk about this all the time. Right. And um, you know, there's that stereotype that women are, you know, backstabbing and right. you know, cat fighting and things like yeah. that. But I think when you see um, two groups fighting each other, um, you know, or women fighting each other, you have to look outside of that and look for who's benefiting from that. Because mm -hmm. it's never the people <laughs> involved in the conflict. There's uh -huh. somebody standing outside that conflict who's benefiting from it. And I think when you, when you raise your awareness of that, um, you can shift things because why should, why should that person benefit from your right. conflict? And I think some corporate cultures intentionally create that competitive atmosphere mm -hmm. because they believe it will push people to work harder um, honestly, if you look at the research in positive psychology, it's, it's not true and people will do better work, um, when they feel a sense of teamwork and collaboration and when they align on the vision of the company, you will see people going above and beyond. Absolutely. Um, um, the last one that you talked about was the, um, power of, power of purpose. Mm -hmm. um, purpose is, again, you know, you, you know, I talked about my company a little bit earlier because a lot of these things is very, very related to, you know, what I personally believe and, you know, what we try to do with our customers as well. So this is like, uh, I very powerfully connect with you. Let me put it that way. So tell me about purpose. Uh, why is purpose important and how do you 
create that sense of purpose because this is a multitasking world that we have here. Mm-hmm. You know, we have, all of us have several balls that we're juggling in the air. So in that kind of scenario, how do you get, stop getting distracted and kind of focus on, have that focus versus this constant sense of distraction? Yeah, uh, another great question, Deepa. Um, I think that purpose has to be the, the golden thread that, that links all those tasks mm. together. And if it's not, then I think you have to ask yourself whether or not you should be doing that task. And sometimes the answer is going to be yes, but it really, you know, all this multitasking should be in alignment with your purpose and what you want for your life. I think the power of purpose is that is what's going to drive you forward. That is the thing that when you're having a rotten day and, you know, as an entrepreneur, there's always a day where you're like, oh my God, why am I doing this? Why don't I just right. go work for somebody else and I'll check All the time. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like part, part of that process. Yeah. Um, and without a strong purpose or knowing what your purpose is, you probably, you probably won't make it and you probably will go end up, you know, doing that other thing. And, you know, entrepreneurship is not for everyone for sure. Um, But that connection to your purpose, whether you're a business owner or a CEO, is what's going to get you through the tough days. It's also going to help you, um, especially I do a lot of um, burnout recovery and, you know, sustainable peak performance with my leaders. And delegation is really important. And when something is not part of that golden thread, then you probably need to delegate it to someone else. Uh, you know, for me, um, my, um, my personal mission is to create 1 million conscious leaders in the world. Wow. And so that's why I wrote this book to mm-hmm. get it into as many hands as possible and impact as many lives as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's why I work with leaders because by working with one leader, they may impact 10 people. They may impact mm-hmm. hundred people, a thousand people. And that's, you know, we're that much closer to that, to that 1 million conscious leaders, which really can create the tipping point for, for a better world for all of us. No doubt. I mean, you are, I mean, you're definitely on to something here, uh, Donna. I mean, this is something that, again, as I was mentioning to you in my various communities, all these topics that you're talking about are things that we talk about on a daily basis, on a daily basis, you know? So these are things that, uh, you know, women and a lot of men resonate to as well. Uh, sure. So, sure. Um, and while I say this book is, is for women, and I do, I talk about that in the book, mm-hmm. um, you know, it really is for anyone who wants to step into more leadership and is having obstacles along the way, you mm-hmm. know, like fear, like, self-doubt or sabotage, Mm -hmm. all those things. And, um, you know, I created uh, an album that goes with the book and it has a track for every chapter that is um, a guided meditation or a visualization, something to help you really embody the work and help you overcome that inner sabotage and Mm -hmm. the the subconscious messages that get in the way of our, of our moving forward. So I really tried to create a complete system for people with a workbook and a card deck, the whole thing. Um, because I, I didn't want people to just read it and think, Oh, that's nice. And put it back on their shelf. (laughs) Um, you know, I'm a psychologist. I want to see change. Mm -hmm. I want to see growth. And um, so I really tried to create a system that would help, you know, rewire their brain for more success and help like physiologically help them make the changes to be a wiser and better leader. Awesome. Unleash your inner wise leader. Yeah. For, uh, I, I read it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is this was amazing, Donna. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk to us about your book. 
uh, about your philosophy and about your desire about your sister. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, we are, I'm very sure that this is going to be a huge success and will help thousands and millions of young women to, you know, just like her. Um, so thank you, Deepa. And thank you for having me here today to talk about it and, and share my passion for it. Of course, of course. I'm sure we'll be talking later. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, for another uh, edition of uh, the Shakti Panel Real Talk with Dr. Donna Marino. Bye for now.